Hey everyone and welcome to Quest for Pixels and the second episode of our very special video series, The Beers of the Kingdom, a Zelda discussion, where a couple friends enjoy an adult beverage, or two, and discuss Tears of the Kingdom. I'm Tony Baker and I'll be steering this goo-made mech built by Zonai Parts of a discussion. And joining me in this mech this week is the OG founders of Quest for Pixels, Sheldon Benedict. How are you today, Sheldon? Good. Great. That's good. Good. <laughs> now great. everything's working. <laughs> oh boy, it's always it's always something, isn't it? Oh, with, it is. With these computers, like they feel like they're being held on by the goo that you use to with Zonai <laughs> parts, basically. Yeah. But you know what? We got a little bit of housekeeping that I want to get to before we get into the beers of the kingdom. I just wanted to let you guys know that Beers of the Kingdom is primarily a video series, but a couple people have reached out to me on social media and asked if I'll be hitting, it'll be hitting the podcast feeds as well. And yes, the plan is the week after the video goes up, I'll upload it to podcast services. Nice. But please, please, please watch it on YouTube if you can when it drops and take out your ultra hand ability and hit the <laughs> like and subscribe button. And help us rebuild Quest for Pixels like y'all yes. out there rebuilding Hyrule. <laughs> but now with all that out of the way, Sheldon, I know it's beer time. It is beer time. <laughs> and I want to see, what are you drinking today? So I'm kind of a pleb when it comes to beer. And the only thing they had that was open was Samuel Adams. Hey, Samuel Adams is good. <laughs> I was Adams looking for Rolling good. Rock because my beer preferences were built on my teenage years watching AVGN. And all of a sudden, I became a Rolling Rock fan, but the only thing they had down there was a 20-pack, and I was like, well, I don't need that much. Oh. Yeah. So, no, I settled on Samuel Adams. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I actually enjoy a good Samuel Adams as well. I'm pretty pedestrian when it comes to beers as well, but <laughs> I have a couple here that I got from the local brewery. This one's called Ready Paler oh, 2. Cool. And it's from the Analog Brewing Company here in Edmonton. That's awesome. And uh, it's a session IPA. So that's what I'm going to be drinking. Nice. As well as, depending on how the situation goes, we have my second beer choice. In another oh, cool. castle, <laughs> it's a peach mango milkshake IPA. So it has oh. peaches, 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 peaches. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, you know, we have a, a local brewery here, but in such a small area... You have to be like a diehard, you know, to run that kind of thing. And the people that did, started it originally, they did really good for a couple of years, but now they only sell it by like the keg or whatever you call the things they hook up to the taps. Yeah. They used to sell it in cans and bottles and stuff for a few years, but yeah, now you can't get it. You just have to go to the bar and get it by the pint. <laughs> did do they have anything like where you can like do a tour or anything in those places and like kind of go there and have like some samples or? Yeah. Or so not? they, what they did was they took the Washington school, the school that me and Jess went to in kindergarten, first, second grade. And it was owned. They ended up moving us out. I think in 99 is when we went to the other school because there wasn't enough kids or whatever. They didn't need two schools no more. Oh yeah. But, uh, that some other person bought the school i don't know it, here like six seven years ago these other people basically rented or bought the front half of the building and the very front of it is they have a big patio and then a, like an in like a bar and then um you can like when you go in there they have big glass windows and you can see the brewing like everything they had set up and it was really cool like i said the people the guy that came up with all the beer he was awesome but you know there's only so much you can do in a small town there's only two thousand people the, the one in uh weibo the local brewery they did really awesome it's called beaver creek i think uh, they have this one, it's called Orange Beaver or something. It's fucking really good. But, That's Canadian. Uh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> they uh, they ended up selling their beer like all across the state to bars and stuff like that. So that one took off, but they didn't manage to do that well in Baker. But their beer was always really good. They had a coffee one, so they bought, Jessica had to cold brew coffee for them every week. 
and they oh, made nice. uh, a beer. It was like a light beer mixed with coffee, but that was really super good too. I wish I could still get it. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, this this company, I want to check it out more. I've I've always That's heard awesome. it, I've always heard of them, and they um, they have a little um, little brewery area in really close to where we, where I live, and they serve like you know little appetizers and foods, mm-hmm. and you can have their different beers, and they have arcades in there set up. That's awesome. Yeah, so I want to do. I want to go in there. I want to maybe even do a beers of the kingdom there with That'd somebody be sweet. live one day. That'd be cool. You said it's pretty close. Yeah, it's really close to my house. Like surprisingly close. It's in some like random industrial area tucked mm-hmm. away. But uh, yeah, next time I'm up there, there, we should go check that out. That sounds awesome. That does sound great. That sounds like a good time. All right, Sheldon. You know the beers are tasting delicious. They're poured. They're they're ready to go. They're bottled. <laughs> they're they're poured in the glass. Uh, now I want to know, first off, what's your history with the Zelda series? So, I started begin? out on Super Nintendo. Uh, I grew up, we had a Super Nintendo. Hell yeah. <laughs> we had both wearing a, Super Nintendo-esque yeah. shirts, actually, yeah. I got Mario on. Uh, so we had a Super Nintendo from the time I was born. And... We didn't own Zelda when I was really young. Uh, I remember going to the video store and renting Zelda quite a bit. I got uh, Link to the Past, and that was the first one that I ever played. Um, The first one that I sat down and beat, though, was Zelda Oracle of of Ages. It was the first one that I, because I I was really big into Game Boy, and that one came out in like 2000, I think. I think it was 10 or 9 or 10. And that was the first one that I played. Then I went, and around that time is when the video store closed. And I went down with as much money as I could scrounge together and bought every single Super Nintendo <laughs> game that I could because they were selling them for like $2, you know. Oh, yeah. So I ended up, that's where I ended up getting my uh, Link to the Past was the one that they used to, you know, I used to rent all the time down there. But uh, I didn't really get into the 3D Zeldas until... Twilight Princess, no. No, I played uh, um, Wind Waker was the first 3D one I played. Did you play it on GameCube, or did you play it, like, afterwards? No, I played on the GameCube. That was... So I got the GameCube a while after it came out. I don't know. I must have got, like, a year after it came out or something like that. But uh, Wind Waker was probably the third or fourth game that I got for the GameCube. And I played that one a lot. Um, I can't remember if I beat it, but then when Twilight Princess came out, I started getting more into the 3D ones. But ultimately, I like the 2D top-down Zeldas. 3D ones are awesome, and Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are epic, I mean, as far as a 3D Zelda game goes. But nothing beats good old link to the past <laughs> or um, link between worlds even i mean yeah i was gonna say uh, so shout out to joel falcon he found this uh on his local facebook mar- marketplace for me it's nice. factory sealed really yeah damn so it's I still keep that on a shelf <laughs> it's, even, it's even got the security tag still on it that's awesome was it stolen i don't know maybe <laughs> but all i know is i got a factory sealed one because when he came to visit joel brooks aka the falcon he brought this down for me which was that's awesome, awesome. Yeah, so I'm going to keep that sealed because I found my copy. It's so funny. I wanted to play it again mm-hmm. uh, like a few months ago before Tears of the Kingdom came out. I never got around to it, but I was like, oh, I should buy a loose cart at the local used game shop. And then I found in a box that I still had the game in a box. And I was like, oh, it, I have awesome. a full copy here. I thought I'd gotten rid of it or or lost it or whatever. But yeah, I love A Link Between Worlds. It is a great game. Oh yeah, that one was same amazing. with the same with the Oracle games too. Like mm-hmm. I played them on 3DS when they were re-released for um see the one thing so I had my one of my best friends when I was like 9 like 9 to or 8 to 13. His name was Fabio, Fabio Biancarelli. He was Oh yes. Dream of Italian. Yeah. And I went so when Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons came out The plan was for each of us to get the separate one, kind of like the Pokemon games, because that's how we bought them ones, too. But we ended up getting the same one, so we never got to do the thing where, you know, if you play 
one and then play the second one oh, with yeah. a link cable, you can fight Ganon. I've never been able to do that. I hope, they, re- I hope they re-release those. That'd I need be, to. That would be a great one to do a remaster, Link yeah. Awakening style. Like they that really would be should. awesome. Oh, that's awesome! I'm glad. I'm glad you have a good history. You started with one of probably you know one of the best <laughs> rated <laughs> Zelda games, maybe one of the games of all time. Period. So that's a great start for you. Um, with uh, Tears of the Kingdom, I want to know: Did you get it right when it released, or did you did you get it digital? Did you get it physical? What was the deal with that? So I had tried to pre-order a physical copy. I thought I had a physical copy pre-ordered. But I got screwed out of that. <laughs> but I, uh, the day before it came out, I got on and pre-downloaded it. That way I had it when I went to work. Because I, all I have up at work is just my phone for an internet connection. So I made sure I got it downloaded and everything. So I have the, the digital copy of it. But eventually I'm going to try and pick up a physical copy. That's all the main Nintendo games I've tried to get both. You know, if I end up getting the digital, I'll get a physical just to have on the shelf. But yeah, yeah, yeah no, I downloaded it. I played it. I mean, a few minutes after, I think it was 10 p.m. Because it's yeah, 10 p.m. Um, our time. Yeah, and then 12. It's midnight Eastern. Eastern. Yeah. Yep. So I kind of went the same way. I I went um, digital because I wanted to preload it, play it right when it came out. <laughs> Super excited. Um, I had it all ready to go. I was planning to probably pick it up physical as well, just because, you know, I want to have one on the shelf. Yep. And now that I've played it even more, so I want to have a physical uh, on the shelf as well. But, uh, yeah, so I, I went to get a digital, had it all preloaded and ready to go. And then on Thursday night, when it's supposed to come out, it was getting so close to when it was releasing. But I was I was getting, so I had like a massive headache. Yeah. I had like a, a crazy headache because it was really hot here for a few weeks mm-hmm. and it led to a lot of forest fires and a lot of smoke. Yeah. And I think like working outside and like the smoke and the heat, I just was feeling like not very good. So I had that like, same thing this week because of all the fires up by Regina, all that smoke blew down here. And that was it was bad. Like at the middle of last week when I was working, it was bad. Like the headaches and my eyes burned. I had to take my contacts out. Yeah, man, I believe it. It was it was pretty bad. So I didn't end up playing it on Thursday. And then Friday rolled around. I went to work. I was thinking about it all day. I'm like, oh, I want to play, I want to play. And I got home and then I, the same thing happened. I was just so tired. And I'm like, you know, it's a disservice to play a game like Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. It seemed like it was going to be so grand. And to be like, you know, not feeling well or not feeling it. So I was like, you know what, I'll just wait. And then, you know, Friday passed and Saturday came. Went to work for a little bit, came back. Mm-hmm. It was like half day, you know, midday, started playing the game, started recording some footage just so I could have some like B-roll for, for maybe for Beers of the Kingdom and yep. playing through it. And man, I was, I just could not, I couldn't stop playing. I thought I'd be yeah, like, that's... oh yeah, I'll play it for like an hour or so and then I'll do something else. No, That's how you know it's a good game. The same thing happened to me I, when I played it the release night. Jessica fell asleep on the couch, so I took my Switch and went and laid down and turned Bob's Burgers on or something. And I was like, I'm just going to play for a little bit, go to bed. And I was sitting there playing, and all of a sudden I looked at the clock, and it's 3.30 in the morning. I was like, oh, God, I've been playing this a long time. Yeah. I'm like, I think, that's how I you know I, it's a great game. Yeah, I think I played it from, like, when I started at, like, 1 or 2 o'clock until, like, midnight the first day. Like, no, mm-hmm. almost nonstop. I couldn't believe it. And And the next day we were getting ready to go to the mountains for the weekend, or, like, for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And I wasn't planning on bringing my Switch. I thought, oh, I'll just play a little bit and then I'll leave it. But as soon as I played it on Saturday, I'm like, no, I'm packing the Switch. There's no way I'm leaving this behind. Cannot leave it behind. So we went to the mountains and we had a great stay. And, and every time before bed, I started to play a little bit. And um, there was a couple of beers of the Kingdom that night, let me tell you, because I had a few drinks and then I was playing and I was like, oh, I'm kind of one eye in it. I think I fell asleep <laughs> with it in my hand. But I was I was just enjoying it so much. And I've put so much time in it. Do you know what your playtime is? I haven't checked mine yet because it was a little bit because um, I started later, so it wasn't it didn't do the ten days or whatever yet. So w- uh, what's your playtime at? If you know, let's see, because it should, 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 should be, should be anyway. for, played for forty five hours or more. Oh crap! That's I haven't awesome. even looked at that. That's crazy. I wonder what I'm going to clock in at. I was thinking it would probably be close to like 40 or 50 hours. That's kind of the ballpark I'm thinking. 
because I've just I've put so much time into it. It's but awesome. it doesn't even it doesn't even feel like I don't know, it doesn't feel like you're putting in a lot of time no. and it doesn't it doesn't feel like you're progressing too much either, but it feels like you're still enjoying it. Like with the way I played Breath of the Wild is when I started it, I turned off um the map right away mm-hmm. and the HUD. And I just wandered around for like I don't know, 90 or so hours before I, you know, beat the game. Yeah. And now I feel like I've done so little and I've already 50 <laughs> well, hours in. Or well, that's what thing. I assume I'm 50 hours in. Trains going by. <laughs> uh, so I probably spent the first 20 hours, I'm guessing. I didn't touch anything, any of the main story at all. I just started. I wanted, so I like to make, like, unlock the whole map. Like, so you can see the whole map before I start digging in too deep, just because then you can fast travel and all that kind of stuff it makes it a little bit easier when you're chasing quests. But, uh, I've got, I think I have three sections of the map left to unlock, but the first, before I did my first temple, I probably got about half of the map unlocked and I did enough to get enough shrines to get two hearts and about half of the second wheel of stamina before I went back and tried the... I did the Wind Temple first. Okay. Uh, the Rito Village one. And I kept forgetting about this freaking jump feature. And I kept trying to climb, like, the, the one pole, and I couldn't make it. I was starting to get flustered. I was like, well... So I did a few more shrines, and, you know, I got my stamina upgraded to a second full wheel... I was like, I've got to have enough to do it now. And when I got there, I stopped and thought about it for a minute. And I was like, oh, I bet I can just jump up into Yeah, you stand underneath and jump through it. And I was like, well, I spent a lot of time getting... But it's nice to have a lot of stamina. I mean, just for exploring. But yeah. uh, I liked the... The temple surprised me. That was nice. I mean, that they weren't the... The... How... Uh, the divine beasts. The divine beasts were. Yeah, you know what? That's one of my biggest complaints with um, Breath of the Wild is like I loved everything, but I felt like the divine beasts weren't very enjoyable for me no. specifically. They um, didn't feel like a dungeon. They didn't feel like what a dungeon feels like in a Zelda game. No, and you know I think I really like what they're doing with this new style of temple mm-hmm. dungeon thing because it. It feels very, it's like a hybrid of what we used to have and yeah. a little bit of like a divine beast. But I, I don't know. I just, for some reason, my brain just gets these a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And, but the best part is, man, is like, you know, a lot of them have you unlocking like five locks or whatever yeah. at the end to open something and then fight your boss or whatever. Mild spoilers uh, are ahead just in case. But um, yeah, I, I, there was one where you had to, I don't remember which one. You had to go to a bunch of different sides of the map or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it wanted you to go this way. You could tell it wanted you to go this way. And I just, I went in such a random direction and just figured, like, I just, it's like I was banging my head against the wall and I got through the wall. (laughs) And I was like, I'm doing it this way. And it worked. It worked. So, and I didn't felt, I didn't feel frustrated that because, like, if you, with traditional dungeons, you need to figure out how they want you to solve yeah. that dungeon. And there's no other way. <laughs> yeah. But with these, like I said, I could just brute force my way through it if I needed to. If I'm too dumb to figure it out. Yeah. I could just brute force my way through it and, and well, get and the same result. Like you said, they found a unique way. Because the problem with Breath of the Wild was you weren't collecting different tools in that one you, you collected the different powers you got but you weren't collecting the hook shot you weren't collecting the boomerang and all that kind of stuff and that's what the dungeons were primarily based around was whatever tool you got in that dungeon then you use that tool to solve the dungeon that was missing in breath of the wild so the dungeons or the divine beasts were just kind of blah there wasn't even really enemies in them but this yeah. one like you said it's cool because there's not a set path you can do it however you want to do it. And that's how, when I did the Wind Temple, that one, I, I was the same way. I was all over the place trying to figure out what to do. And, like, the one, you know, I'm pretty sure I did it wrong, but I ended up having enough stamina that I just climbed and figured it out from there. But uh, I just got to the Fire Temple. Have you done that one? 
the yes. the Goron. No, uh, yes, the Goron. I've done the Goron, the Rito, and the uh, the fish people. Zoran. Zora. Zora. Yeah. Yeah. So I just got to the Fire Temple, and thank God there isn't a set directed path to. I I don't spoil anything for people, but that's that the one, one I was talking about, where I did it whatever way, and it. That's what I was talking about. I spent two hours today trying to figure it out and that one became my new ocarina of time water temple <laughs> like if you had to do that in a set path that would be so complicated but that was the, I, that was the first one i went to really that was the very first place i went well and i was worried about um you know making sure i had the right armor because after i went to the rito village and i almost froze to death but I did manage, I found one of the cold gear pants in the training or the tutorial area up in the sky. Yeah. Somehow I stumbled across a pair of the, you know, the, the cold weather pants. But uh, so then I was trying to figure out where to get the cold weather top or whatever. And it was, you know, like 1500 rupees or something like that. So I ended up grinding. I, so I like going through the caves and basically playing treasure hunter <laughs> so i did yeah, that for a yeah. long time and i think i've got like fourteen thousand rupees right now so i managed to buy the the heat gear right away when i went up to the goron city but Dude, yeah I, I find the, the that's i never knew about like so i like the caves a lot i think the caves are a great addition like it's it's mm-hmm. basically just like you've explored and it's just it just rewards you with like that discovery it just comes yeah. up on the screen like oh man something I'm, I'm discovering something that's awesome and yeah there's always such like nice little surprises in there sometimes there's like a difficult enemy or two mm-hmm. to beat and well, just so many and, great and so many great like items you can find well and they take if you take the sky world the caves and the underworld and combined it they have it's more huge. than they've more than doubled the size of the map, which it's is crazy huge. because it was huge to begin with. And now it's, yeah. I mean, the when I the first time I went underground, I was almost, I like overwhelmed. I was like, oh god, this is because I didn't think I I was thinking it was going to be just like a, a section or an area that you did through when the different ones you drop down, but it's all connected. <laughs> I which know is it's crazy. It blew my mind going down there. And then when you first like get to jump into there, like oh, mm-hmm. God, such a cool. That was moment. awesome. And I've got so cool many video moments. moments saved on my Switch. <laughs> Dude, that reminds me of like when Breath of the Wild came out. Mm-hmm. You know, the Switch was brand new, and uh, I had saved so many videos and and pictures, and it was kind of like a little scrapbook of mm-hmm. of like memories. And the same thing's happening for me now because I got the uh, the old special edition Switch here. Yeah. I'm ordering mine tomorrow, <laughs> and I put only. Zelda on it. That's not yeah. the only game on it. I'm not putting anything else on it. Yeah, I was listening to uh, you and Skinny Matt talk about that last yeah. week. Oh, and uh, before we go on, I want to say I also got my uh, Pro Controller in the mail. Nice. But I've been I trying connected... to order that for... Ugh, it's ridiculous. When I connected it's... it to the to the Switch, it was mm-hmm. um, I was having some stick drift, and I was super sad about it. Oh, no. And I was like, you know what? I, I, want, I thought maybe I could return it. But they're so sold out in a lot of mm-hmm. places that it's hard to return and then get another one. So I'm like, you know what? I'll open it up. You know, I've opened up my other Pro Controller. I've changed the buttons and the batteries. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, I could figure this out. But I was like, I, you know, sometimes when you pair a Bluetooth controller and you're touching the stick and it's yeah. like, then it kind of thinks that's the the set position. Yeah. I was like, maybe that happened because I was kind of messing around with the sticks while I was pairing and luckily, that, that seemed to be the case, because then I unpaired nice. it, paired it again, and it seems to be working ever since, so Good that's deal. great. I have I have some sort of, like, controller-buying problem right now. Oh, I dude. purchased, like, three recently. I got I, I picked up this Power A one. It's pretty that good. That was cool. A little flimsy, but I like the design on it. And mm-hmm. then we got this one. And then I just picked up the 8-bit dough controller as well. Oh, nice. That, uh, it's I got, like an ultimate 8-bit dough. I got... I was or on a do. controller-buying spree, too. I got... Uh, so I had the original um, Monster Hunter 4, or yeah, Monster Hunter 4 controller. And then I got the new Monster Hunter, the, the Sunbreak update. They released oh, yeah. another Monster Hunter controller. I got that one. I was trying to get the Legend of Zelda one, but 
the scalpers beat me to it but it's nice nintendo like i was surprised that the switch the special edition came back into stock yeah there's a so, lot it seems like out there yeah. for the for the switch well and i got paid this week and i told i asked well i asked jess i said is it okay if i buy it i said this is probably the last one i'll buy because this is you know probably the last full year of switch but she's like no that's fine because my switch isn't working i'll take yours you can get the new one i was like perfect nice. it works works out for both uh, I want to know how you feel about the story and trying to stay light on the spoilers if you can, but uh, what do you weird. think of what you're seeing so far? It's really weird. The beginning was dark. Like that intro sequence was very oh, Twilight Princess. It was it. awesome. Like epic. And I feel like they did the cinematics in this one way better than Breath of the Wild because like you forget you're playing a game for a moment when like one of the cinematics are playing, which is crazy that they took Zelda, a game that was mainly quiet for the most part. And they made these just big cinematic moments, but the story's kind of weird, like in a good way. It's really strange. Kind of like X-Files kind of, <laughs> or um, it reminded me of, uh, Oh, what am I thinking of? The 60s show. There's a guy on the wing oh, of the like plane. Twilight, Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone. That's, I mean, some of the stuff that's happened is very weird. You know, I could, th- you know, I've never, I wasn't really thinking that way, but yeah, I, I could see it is a very, it's like a dark, intriguing story. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, and somehow it all like works together, even though you're kind of doing it in its own, in your own way. Yeah. I don't know. It's something that was really lacking in Breath of the Wild, right? Like, yeah. They, they didn't really have any in story elements besides if you had those memories, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and I, that I one. I kind of like what this is happening instead. They took what was great about Breath of the Wild and they added a, you know, classic Zelda storyline into it. And they did it really well so far from what I've saw, which is cool. Because. Like I said, Zelda was always a quiet game. Like the voice acting's actually a surprisingly nice addition because they had a little bit of voice acting in Breath of the Wild, but they got a lot of it in this, which is I was kind of worried about that, but it's pretty cool. And they kept Link quiet, so which comes off kind of weird in some cases. Like in Especially the beginning, when he's like explaining stuff. <laughs> well, in the beginning, when Zelda was like freaking out because she found you know the mysterious writing when they're down in that cave, and Link just standing there like, yep. Uh, you know he's a strong silent type yeah. but no i i think they did really good so far with the story yeah, I, you know, i'm really curious to see how it all ends because it's like i said it's so weird <laughs> me, me too there's gonna have to be a beers of the kingdom spoiler cast maybe i'll try yeah. to get like a bunch of people on that one that'd be cool like a round table kind of discussion <laughs> one thing i was thinking about with the with the story is i kind of like how when you're doing each region um, the story of like the younger heroes helping you out mm-hmm. is kind of like the focus and I kind of like that it's kind of like a passing of the torch in a weird way yeah and I actually read or or heard somewhere on the internet that like this Zelda game was made by younger devs with like oh, El- yeah. with uh El Numa just kind of like overseeing things where he's mm-hmm. kind of stepped back a little bit so I wonder if that's kind of the parallel for like these younger developers like taking over these franchises where it's like it's kind of the passing of the torch to them. And they yeah. said that like they wanted this to be kind of the template for Zelda going forward yeah. for like it, at least the 3d versions. I don't know. Maybe they'll still do the t- 2d. I hope, but well, it kind of fits the whole Nintendo story over the last four years or so of Nintendo. Nintendo's gotten a lot of, you know, newer, younger developers working on things. And the ones that we, all the developers that we grew up knowing are the ones that are overseeing everything now, which is, kind of cool is we've seen a lot of awesome i like splatoon is amazing i mean that was a really cool idea that blossomed into a franchise but the that story now as you said that does seem like they kind of paralleled real world with the zelda maybe cool to see how they build on that going forward that'd be awesome yeah and another thing i really like about the story is that it's a con- since it is a direct continuation of breath of the wild you get this really cool thing where characters recognize you where they're like, Hey Link, where have you been? How's it going? And it, it's, it's, it adds for really different conversations than you usually have in a Zelda game because usually it's like, 
oh, who's this new hero? And it's Link. It's a different iteration of Link every time, right? Yeah. So it's kind of nice to have this kind of continuation and you have this like base of people who knew what was going on, are trying to rebuild, and you kind of, like, there's that lookout point area. Mm-hmm. And I went there at the beginning to, you know, start the story off, and then I, I didn't come back until, like, just recently, and everything's kind of evolved in there, where, mm-hmm. like, things are happening, people that you met along the way are in there. Yeah. And uh, there's also, like, a lot of hidden, like, cool things happening in that space oh. as well. Okay, speaking of that place, have you found the... Yes. Yeah, that's don't don't say anything, weird don't too. say anything else. Don't that's say anything all else. I'll say. I, yeah, I was like, I was freaked. I was kind of freaked out. I, I know it was weird. Was like, and scary. What do, what do I do here? <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's just this is such a. It's it's a game that I haven't. I haven't felt this way about a game in a really long time. Where Not I just either. I just want to continue playing it, and when I'm not playing it, I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm, you know, when I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh, I wish I was playing it. <laughs> and it's just this vicious, it's this weird cycle. And I think it's, I think it's really interesting because for me, I, when, when I have the option to do whatever, I get super lost in games and I'll just, you know, explore and enjoy and whatever. But this time around, instead of, I, I kind of focused a little bit more on the story than I normally would. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, I, I know that I'm never going to finish this game if I don't. Yeah. And I need to at least feel like there's some progression being made. So I kind of like beeline to a couple of story things. And uh, on the on the way I would do stuff. So if I was like, I'm like, I'm going to go in this direction to this region. And, you know, if I see a, a shrine, I'll go to it. If I see something interesting, I'll go to it. If I see a tower to open the map, of course, I'll go to it. Because that's also a thing I wanted to do as well. Open up the map. But uh, yeah, it's just I've never focused so much on on like the the story aspect, and it's very weird for me, especially because a lot of people are saying like they're not doing that at all, and usually yeah. I wouldn't either. But I'm just like I know I'll be I'll never finish it, and that will drive me crazy. Yeah. So I, I need I needed to have be like okay today I want to go to this direction and do this. I'm like setting goals and tasks for myself. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm writing out notes. You know I haven't felt that way about a game like. I think the last one was kind of like Minecraft where I'd be mm-hmm. at work and I'm like, I'm going to do this when I get back, make this, make this. And yeah, it's just really weird. Oh, one thing I wanted to ask you about is uh, do, how do you feel like you're playing the game? I feel like I've been playing the game more like Breath of the Wild, at least for the very, like maybe like half the time I've been playing. I'm thinking in a very Breath of the Wild kind of way. I'm running, I'm climbing, I'm doing whatever. Mm-hmm. And I kind of ignore the building for at least at least in the beginning. Yeah, I'm the same. I was the same way too. Um, now, like I said, I keep I keep forgetting about things. Now I've actually like the last couple of days I've been I did the water temple, and now I'm working on the fire temple. But uh, I mean, I spent most of my time just trying to climb everything, you know, and try like I said, getting more uh, stamina so I could glide longer and stuff like that. Um, this week, well, since I got home, I've been messing around more with the building. Um, I'm still kind of lost a little bit on your energy. So, you know, when you kill the Zonai, you get the charges from them. Oh, so yeah, mine's still it, super low. I don't even think yeah. I upgraded it once. See, I managed to upgrade it once. Um, I don't know what I did. I did some special mission and i ended up getting a hundred of the triangle charges or whatever and that's what you use to upgrade your energy bar so i upgraded it once but i need to mess around with that whole system a little bit more because i'm still kind of lost on how that works as far as like you know taking the charges and changing them into like if there i know there's forges around or whatever yeah but uh I'd like to play with that more, but like you said, lately or the in the beginning, pretty much, I've been playing it very like Breath of the Wild, where I'm trying exploring and climbing and you know just trying to run everywhere. Yeah, I was doing the same thing. I think now, like after being in it for so long, I'm starting to really get the vibe of what I should be doing. It, well, it's more- really it's really hard to think about ascend. Also, I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta use ascend. I yeah. gotta use ascend. Especially, yeah. like, when you get to some areas that have, like, a lot of cliffs. It seems yeah. like the cliffs were designed to be, like, a flat portion and then a tall portion with another flat portion. And some yeah. of the, like, caves as well. That's a good yeah. way to, to do it as well. Well, so, you know, you're done the cave. 
yeah, like if you're done or I got myself in a hairy situation <laughs> where I managed to find a cave with an enemy that I could not beat, period. And I remembered it. And I just jumped out of there before he killed me. But uh, even like the shrines, the more shrines I've done, they've taught me more about how to yeah. play with the system. Um, like the Ascend one, I did a shrine finally. And that's when I was like, oh, yeah, there's that. I f- completely forgot about that feature. So then I went back to the, you know, the Wind Temple and managed to get all the way up. Yeah, but, I think I think that's really, really key how they use those shrines. I also yeah. enjoy the shrines a lot better but, in this game than I ever have in Breath yeah. of the Wild. And I think it's it's really nice that even though it seems like, I don't know, sometimes you're playing for a long time and then it's like, do this simple task. And it's like a really easy shrine, but you don't really care because you're like, oh, damn, I beat that really quickly. But there was uh, one shrine where there's there's one shrine where you have to build a bridge. Mm-hmm. Have, did you play that one? I think so. And I couldn't I couldn't maneuver the ultra hand and like the movement because it was very early on when I found it. Yeah. And I wasn't really good with doing the movement of like mm-hmm. rotating things. It was very difficult to get your head around that for me. At I, kept, at the beginning. I kept having to drop things and I moved my body and picked them back up <laughs> before I realized you could actually <laughs> yeah. turn them all around. That's awesome. But yeah, so you're supposed to do this bridge and get it to the other side to walk across. And I was able to do a few of them. And then there was this one I couldn't I could not get to work. I knew what was necessary, but I couldn't get it to work. So what I did is um, I actually dropped the bridge in there and it fell over, but like up and down. So I was able to like walk across this way, even though it was supposed to be like this way. And yeah, it was really, uh, it was really weird, but like, it's another thing where it's like, figure it out the way you want to figure it out. There's one that I found. It was the most aggravating one. Like I haven't played another one that has made me angry except for one. And it's around the ascend feature, sort of, I think that's what I did. But you, you go in this cube, like a big, huge box and you can't climb it it's that special the material inside the shrine and it has different ledges around it and you can turn the box 360 degrees like all different directions and i spent so long trying to just get it to turn with like myself on a ledge and finally what i did was i got one ledge to where i could stand behind it and i shot an arrow at the thing that activates the movement and as it was moving, I activated it, and I just started tapping A as fast as I could, and all of a sudden I flew up through the top of it. And that was the only way I could figure it out. But that one was crazy difficult. Like I don't, maybe if I went back to it now, because I did that pretty early, but maybe it wouldn't be so bad. But yeah, that one was weird. <laughs> I find you can like, um, if you really use recall in smart ways, you can kind of that can kind of do things. So like if you use ultra hand, pick something up and like throw it mm-hmm. <laughs> and then use it in reverse and then get yourself on high enough to get a glide somewhere. I yeah. find th- th- those kind of things See. kind of like break the game. It's clearly not the way you're supposed to do it, but it doesn't break the game because it's like, go ahead it's do whatever you want. Feature. Yeah. The, the, the recall one is my new one that I've been forgetting. <laughs> like there was this one part where the enemies rolled a big, huge spike ball down a hill and I was trying to fight him, and I was trying to take him out with the arrow, and I was dodging the ball as it came down, and then I was like, oh, wait. I finally went back there, because I couldn't beat it. There were so many enemies. Well, if you use recall and roll that ball back up the hill, it'll take them all out. Yeah. Same with uh, with the like likes. If they mm-hmm. spin out boulders, you can recall the boulder, and it will hit them. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's great. But sometimes they can like block it or like move, but most of the time it'll just hit them. And you can kill them pretty easily with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like I wanna... that the like likes always drop a shield. <laughs> That's a cool callback to the original, you know, 2D games where the like likes would steal your shield. Yeah. Well, I want to know um, what's your favorite uh, Zonai either equipment or device? So. I like the, so you know the bird looking uh, That's what I was flight gonna ones? Say. <laughs> so I like taking and just attaching as much like fans and stuff to it. And now I've, I finally found one of the steering wheel things. So now I went to one of the big dispenser things and I got a bunch of the driving or the steering wheel controls. And 
setting one of those up with like four batteries and like three fans on it, you could fly everywhere. It's awesome. I love that one. <laughs> That's great. I was going to say the exact same thing. There's something about, about that one. And um, yeah, there's a couple of parts where, where you're like, how am I going to get up there? And then you look to your right and there's one of those wings and you're like, well, that's also, that's really cool how they, they thought of everything when they were walking through that world and placing objects, because, you know, like you said, you're sitting there like, there's no way I can do this. And you start looking around and here's all this stuff, build something. I mean, it's cool. We should do a video reel of like all the like flying devices and then play danger (laughs) zone in the background and make it link top gun, top gun link. That's awesome. (laughs) <laughs> tears of the top gun yeah that's great I, yeah it's the same for me i really like that one another one i really like is um i i just recently found those wheels that kind of go by themselves mm-hmm. i feel like there's a lot of potential there but like i'm not very creative when it comes to the building and, and you can, but you can just see some like crazy things people have built i think a feature that would be nice for them to add in an update is like you know how with the um, Animal Crossing you could ha- share design codes? Oh yeah. They should do that with with the building stuff. It's like you That'd build something sweet. crazy, you take it to some Zonai like um console or computer and you upload it or whatever and then you share your code and then people can download them. That would I th- be awesome. I think that would be amazing cuz then it would get people like me who aren't super creative to be able to play it for a really long time cuz I just want to play around with every crazy thing yeah. that people have built. Oh yeah, that's an amazing idea. Just having next to one of the dispensers have a uh, Zoni computer, and then you just get on, scroll through all the different things people uploaded. That'd be sweet. Yeah, because I'm you know the what? same way. I'm not very creative. I mean, I build things and I make them work. That's about as creative as I get. Yeah, I, the whole game, I'm pretty much just muscling my way through. Like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just making it work. Like, there's some bosses I knew I shouldn't have fought. And I just, like, kept eating food and just going yeah. at it, shooting arrows, like, slowing down time. I love when you shoot an arrow in the air and it just, like, freezes. And mm-hmm. just, yeah, just just that kind of stuff is what is what I've been doing. And I just can't stop playing it. It's great. That's great. Have you used any of the, your Amiibo, any of your Zelda Amiibo with it yet? I, I haven't, no. I, I have an obsession with any of the new Zelda games getting the green tunic <laughs> oh, yeah. and i is, is that i'm missing it? yeah so you can get same way that was in breath of the wild each of the different style amiibo figures will give you the tunic and hat and everything from their respective games um so like i have the ocarina of time link i have the original link amiibo and i have um twilight princess one and then i have the breath of the wild ones but the the Ocarina of Time one, I managed, I got Epona, and I got uh, the Tunic of Time. And then another oh, nice. cool one is, so you know, for uh, Link's Awakening, the Link amiibo figure they released that looks... Yeah, the, like, the little like toy. The toy. Looking, yeah. <laughs> that one... I uh, I scanned that one and it, yeah, gives seen you, some it gives you a head like or you know like a hat basically that makes you look like the toy Link amiibo. It's so creepy. It looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, another thing I wanted to quickly ask you before we wrap it up here is, how's the Korox um, stuff going for you? The what? With the Korox, how's that going with you? Uh, are you doing much of those uh Oracle challenges with the little guys or what i've done <clears throat> i've done i guess i've done quite a few i upgraded my like my uh my just inventory or uh, I, uh weapon like sword bag yeah i've got that one i just did the eight korok seed upgrade on that one and then i did two or three on the bow and arrows but I've found more of mine by accident, <laughs> um, just lifting things or whatever. And yeah. then there's the the classic ones from Breath of the Wild where you're on top of a mountain. There's a thing you stand on and shoot the targets. Uh, I like the ones where you have to Chase transfer the, flowers. <laughs> the, the one where you have to, like, there's a Korok that's stuck because his backpack's too heavy. And you oh, have yeah. to, you know, build something to transfer them somewhere. I like them one. Those ones are pretty fun. A couple of times I just picked them up and carried them because it wasn't very far. 
But another time I attached him to a flying device and flew him. That was pretty fun. <clears throat> yeah, I, I find like the ones that you can find around the world, like picking up the rocks or like I like the ones where, where you chase the flower. <laughs> you pick up the flower and chase it around. Uh, but with with the ones where the guys were with the backpacks, I'm finding them to be a little bit of a chore. Yeah. At first I was like, oh, yeah, that's fun. But then I'm like, I, I talked to him and he's like, my friend's over there and the smoke's like so far away. I'm like, just do it that, yourself. <laughs> they're like the short ones. There's been like three or four of them that I just think that I just left because it was so far away. Like, I don't mind if it's within seeing distance. Then, like I said, if there's something there to build. I'll build like a cart or whatever and attach them to it and push it down the hill. But a couple of them, they were so close. Like I said, I just picked them up with the grab ability and just carried them down there. But the ones that were like super, like there was one where he was on top of a hill and the smoke was across a chasm, like a huge ravine. And there wasn't anything like there wasn't any of the planes like, or the, the bird um structures or anything like that there's nothing there the only thing you do is i guess chop down trees and put fans on it but that was one of the ones i was like nope i just left (laughs) yeah yeah i'm seeing that a lot where i'm like it's it's a little far you know i'll probably come back to them eventually but i was like i got i got i don't have time for you right now i got a schedule i need to meet i'm gonna go that way and you're trying to get me to go this way so no thank you see i'm excited to unlock the uh shrine sensor because i talked to one of the guys in the lookout landing in the beginning like before i went off to the first temple i was talking to different people around there and the one scientist guy that you talked to for like the first mission uh the guy that's with pira yeah the goggles guy yep he has uh a lab or whatever but he was talking about the thing that helps you locate shrines and I I don't know how you unlock it, or it, I'm guessing it's further down the storyline somewhere, but I'm excited to unlock that. That was, I enjoyed that in uh, Breath of the Wild, actually being able, like, because, you know, sometimes you're close to them, and you, you, there's no way you'd ever know. But these ones, I mean, they have the green, like, most of them have the green thing coming off the top, which is nice, because you yeah. can actually spot them. But having that locator will be awesome, just to, you know, knock them off when you're close. See, I don't even think I've even heard about him him talk about that at all. But um, I, I do really like, because I like, uh, anytime I can get up somewhere and just glide, I do it. Because, you know, it's always fun to do. Or like with the towers. Oh, I love the animation for the towers yeah. and they shoot you up there. That's awesome. That's so cool. Took a lot of videos of that, right? Screenshots <laughs> and videos. But yeah, I just love anywhere you can just glide and you can just see like, there's a shrine, there's a shrine, there's a yeah. shrine. And you're like, I'm just going to glide into this direction. It's great, man. I, 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 this might be, this might be my game of the year for sure. I know it's still early in the year and we got Diablo and like some other things coming out and there could be some mystery uh, Nintendo games at some point, I'm sure. But maybe, maybe Metroid Prime 4, but I doubt it. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I'm pretty sure this is my game of the year. Like, I think so too, man. I, I, I mean, mean well, it's, it's to be seen for me because like I get bored of games pretty quickly and I bounce off them. Mm-hmm. So I want to see how this goes long term. Like, will I finish it? Will I finish the story? Will I want to come back and do more? And I think I think as of right now, I, that's the case. So I'm just going to enjoy it as, as it is right now and, and go with the flow, man. So I got one quick question for you. So I've been seeing... So it, Tears of the Kingdom has been breaking record after record as far as best games sold, like as many copies sold. But now I was on uh, Twitter and I saw like four or five of the same tweet about, you know, these people complaining about the, the, the graphics and, you know, saying how this and that and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, all right, well, it's pushing the Switch, you know, as hard as the Switch is going to go as far as graphics go. And for two, they told us that it was going to be Majora's Mask, basically. They said, we're going to take that engine and make a new game. Same thing they did with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. It's going to look the same for, I mean, as far as the design, this one's way more detailed than Breath of the Wild was. But I like the art design. I think it's, I don't want, because like, people, the one thing they said, well, you know, I want a, a realistic Zelda. 
I don't want a realistic Zelda. Zelda's not supposed to be realistic. I don't want it to look like Skyrim at all. That would be weird. But yeah, no, I I agree with you. I think I think the stylistic choice they use for Breath of the Wild is good because, and Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom because it it, it has a storybook look to it. Mm-hmm. It makes and, it timeless. Yeah, it's, it's a nice time. Thing. Again, it's the same thing with Wind Waker, right? Like, it's yep. it's a thing where people are going to be like, oh, we don't like this, we don't like this. And then, like, 20 years later, they'll be like, oh, this holds up really well because yeah. it's a it's an art choice, right? And, like, could it be better, like, sharper or whatever? Yeah, sure. But I think the the art style lends well to to that storybook look. Yeah. And it's it's kind of, like, hazy. And it's fine, man. Like, I don't It looks great on the OLED. It looks great on yeah. the on the tv and mm-hmm. i have i have no problems with it and like, i haven't had i haven't had any problems with i've seen people talk about slow down and stuff like that and i haven't ran into that at all i don't know i mean i guess breath of the wild did it a couple times but they managed to update that problem out yeah. um i think but, I, thought I saw a little bit of slowdown, but like nothing that broke the experience for yeah. me and and like this game is so much fun and like so much exploration and, and just Nintendo knows how to make amazing gameplay. It's a video game. It's neat. The gameplay needs to come first, and they sure did that. Yeah, it's oh, man, it's great. You know what? On that, that's that's the perfect way to end it. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> cheers to the kingdom. Cheers. And Sheldon, where can they find you? Uh, I, I'm on Twitter, Nintendo Shell. It's just Nintendo Shell with one L, and. On Discord, I've been using Discord now that I got a new phone and actually get notifications. <laughs> so I've been trying to, you know, be on Discord more often. That's in the quest for pixels. And then you can find me on our YouTube channel because I'm going to start working on some more of that stuff as I get more space to do so. Because right now, me and my son are sharing a room. But uh, no, so, um, you know, there'll be. A lot more Quest for Pixel stuff help with, you know, coming in the future with all of us, I think. Yay! Yeah, I got my uh, basement all set up now, so I have my little uh, nook <laughs> for me to record in, which is great. Yeah. I'm still trying to set it up perfectly, but you guys can find me at Tony Baker 87 That's where I t- post about, you know, random stuff that we're talking about with games and Quest for Pixels and any pop culture stuff. And, uh, yeah, we're going to, like I said, we're going we're gonna to rebuild this Quest for Pixels like we rebuilt Hyrule. Yes. It's going to be great. (laughs) And I guess we'll see you guys all next time. See you later. Peace.